Welcome to the ER. Welcome to the ER. Walk, welcome to the ER. Welcome to the ER. Our reality is real. Welcome to the ER. Let us show you how we feel. Welcome to the ER. We all have a choice. Welcome to the ER. Now we all have a voice. Welcome to Early Reality. I'm your host, Brandon Powell. We have a wonderful show lined up for you guys featuring the MyCom Soapbox Derby winners. We also have the ER team where they visited the Green in the Ghetto. We have the ER Lab featuring Crazy Blends. We have a Q&A from Anton Gardena Elementary School. ER Shorts showing short films from Maliki Center. And we have the Trending Box featuring new music from Good Grades and Noon. First, we have a serious reality check from Tania and Tania on the tragic suicides in Perrysville, Ohio. Welcome to the ER. So Tania, have you heard about what's happening in Perry Township, Ohio? Yes, I've heard that there has been six suicides since the beginning of the school year, but the parents say that it's bullying, but the police officers have no evidence of bullying. If it's not bullying, why do you think so many teens keep committing suicide? Because it was going in their household, in school, or on social media. Teens should think about what that would do to their close friends and parents. I also like parents should pay more attention to their children. I agree. Parents shouldn't let their kids wear whatever they want to wear, watch whatever they want to watch, and text whoever they want to text. I'm Tania. I'm Tania. And this is all the time we have today. This has been another reality check. We'll, we'll see, see you next time, time on ER. ER. Welcome to the ER. There's a lot of things to be worried about when walking to school as a new kid. Some good, some bad. When you don't have friends, you're a bigger target for bullying. As a new kid, there are so many things going through my head. My mom didn't get paid yet. What if somebody make fun of my shoes? I can get into a fight. If none of my friends are there, I'm going to have to make new friends. It's crazy without friends being a new kid in a room full of new kids. Are they talking about me? Will they invite me to their table and share their snacks with me and keep me company? Will they follow me on social media? Will they like my posts? Or will they just tear me down like they did at my old school? You have a choice to make when you see me by myself. You have a decision to make. So just because I don't have my close friends that respect me and make me feel good about myself, would that make me your next victim? Will you be the explanation point why I don't believe there is a reason to live? This world full of bullies will be better without me. How will you treat the next new kid? If you are the new kid and you find yourself in these shoes being bullied, please tell an adult. Please tell a teacher, a custodian, your parents, someone you trust. Do not let the pain eat you up inside. To keep this anti-bullying movement going, going, we have a speech from the Soapbox Derby runner-up, followed by two more speeches and an interview by Jonna. Hi, my name is Kiari Murphy, and I do attend Glenville High School, and I'm speaking on behalf of the kids who have been bullied. Tears they cry, the hurt they feel. They are alone and feel no one or anything can heal. But that note they wrote, and they stare at it. They are broken, cold, and they don't know where to go, but six feet down so nobody can know. They choke at the fact somebody look at them wrong or say a simple word to them. They feel wrong. 160,000 kids missing school every day to avoid being bullied. I feel like nobody not hearing me about this number. 160,000 kids missing school every day to avoid being bullied. Why? Why is it when we walk through the halls the schools, go inside these lunchrooms, classrooms, and even homes, and we never notice how a child feels or important how they're going through anxiety. The hardest thing of a child that is a victim of being bullied is to get up every morning and come home, go back to sleep when the day of heartache is done. My name is Jalila Paz, and I go to Shaker Heights High School. The dismay of black teen violence. Everyone has at least one person who they are close with, whether it's a close friend, family member, or that one fake family member. 
I'm almost also pretty sure that everyone knows somebody that they have a pretty good bond with who is involved in the negative impacts of the streets. Whether it's legal court issues, always fighting, being in a gang, drug dealing, owning a weapon, or anything in that type of category. Now did you know that gun-related deaths, more violent crime rates, injuries, and homicides are higher among ages 12 through 24 than any other age group, at 3.5 for every 10,000 African Americans, which is 10 times more the rate of white teens. That's a problem. So let me tell y'all a story. I had someone that was like a brother to me. He was around since I was born all the way up until I was nine years old. He was involved in the street stuff. He sold weed, smoked weed, got into fights, had a gun, he did all of that. And he also had a specific group of friends that he hung around, particularly being his best friend. Him and his best friend did almost everything together and spent the most time with each other. So one day he got a text from his best friend telling him to come down the street and around the corner because it was important. So you know, if your best friend tell you to come down the street and around the corner because it's important, you gonna go. So that's exactly what he did. But he didn't come back home that night. Oh, my name is Nyjah Clay and I go to Horizon Science Academy High School. I'm tired of American teens that lack the basic knowledge. I'm tired of the popular kids that mark education as uncool. I'm tired of playing tug of war with my friends in my education. I'm tired of teens that blame their teachers for not learning when you're responsible for your education. I'm tired of American teens not making education their number one priority, but want successful jobs. I'm tired of teens that pay more attention in their friends than in class and wonder why they fail. I'm tired of my friends I started school with not graduating at the same time as me. I'm tired of wondering how this will barely affect the present and future generations. I'm tired of people thinking this is acceptable. I'm tired of seeing and watching my friends, my peers, give up when I can see the future nurse, lawyers, and architects in them. I'm tired of teens being scared to learn because of what their friends might think. I'm tired of teens not wanting to raise their hand or ask a question or ask for help because they think that might make them look stupid. I'm tired of seeing teens throw their life away to please others. I'm tired of teen dropouts thinking it's okay to be. I'm tired of seeing and not doing because I was taught to believe that my voice, my voice is not loud enough to reach them because I'm just a teen myself. I'm tired of people thinking being smart is dumb, but fitting in is cute. I'm tired of learning being hard and seeing the lack of it turn into a trend. I'm tired of people giving up on this generation because they think it's too late. What made you choose the topic? Um, it's a topic that I know well and I knew everybody could relate to it. Who inspired you to be the person you are today? Um, I don't have much inspiration, but most likely my grandma, she passed. And like everything I do, I, des I dedicate it to her basically. Did you like any other speeches that you heard? Um, everybody did good. Like, like the judges said, no one person won. Everybody won. Everybody got their point across. Everybody said they speech and, I, and all of them, it was meaningful. So there's no, there's no first place, everybody won. What did you think of the speeches and the speakers? Well, I thought all the speeches were outstanding. I thought the speakers were passionate. Uh, not only passionate, but, but knowledge. They had a lot of knowledge and a lot of intellect going into the speeches. I'm just really proud of the young people and what they put together. Which speech did you connect to the most? Wow. The hardest That's a very, very difficult question. Now, you know what? Um, I'm going to not really answer the question by answering it this way. Um, I could relate to different speeches all across the, the whole evening. Um, I love the passion and the wordplay that Lamonte put into his speech. I love the depth of understanding with one young lady that didn't even win that talked about love. Wow. I, I love the honesty of Ayana. And I, I, I love the combination of intellect and composition of Jalila. So I can't say one. I just love I love so many of them. So and I can relate to um, different pieces of each one. Did any of these speeches inspire you to do better in your career? That's a heavy question right there. Um, yeah, I'm gonna tell you why. Um, I'm in a place you know at one point I was you guys and I needed mentorship and I needed 
a certain level of guidance, and I still do. Don't ever feel like you are above being mentored or being uh, assisted. But I also see, I need to actually continue to be strong so I can make sure that I'm, I'm there to support you guys and be able to um, provide you with whatever knowledge, assistance, or, or just maybe cheerleading that I need to do for you all. So, um, yeah, absolutely. All right, my last question mm -hmm. is, who did you look up to when you were our age? Oh, gosh. Um, my father, but also I had a principal. Uh, you know, I went to Heights High School, so I had a principal there um, that meant a whole lot. And I, and uh, so yeah, I would say those two folks, an educator and my own parents. So that shows the power of education. Well, well that concludes my statements and my questions. Okay. And I thank you very much thank for your you, time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Answers. Great questions, too. All right, thanks. All right. Now we're on to Trending Box, my favorite part of the show, where we get to showcase new music, new shoes, new technology, new fashion. And this week, we have new music by Nooney Tunes, Intelligent, and we have Test Day by Good Grades. Yeah. No. Yeah, I'm intelligent on him. I said I'm intelligent on him. Yeah, look, no need intelligent on him. I said I'm intelligent on him. Yeah, huh, I'm intelligent on him. Yeah. I said I'm intelligent on them. I'm only cooking burritos in the kitchen Cause I'm exploding on everybody that said I wasn't Man, intelligent listen, I ain't never sold drugs and I would never sell them Cause I wanna go up and stay intelligent, not irrelevant Anybody that ever doubted you, I want you to know that you ain't gotta listen to them Cause you know you killing it Wanna stay up out of jail, you know I ain't never failed If I go to the DH, you gonna support my mama here If I go to the DH, I'm to go make an honor here If I go to the DH, I can't drive the Audi out of here Yeah, I said I'm intelligent on them. I'm intelligent on them. I'm only cooking burritos in the kitchen because I'm exploding on everybody that said I wasn't intelligent. Yeah, huh, I do all my writing here. I said I'm so intelligent like Neil deGrasse Tyson here. I'm throwing all them punchlines like I was Mike Tyson here. We catching all them goals. You will never see no fright in here. Try to be the best so we can build a light in here. P-I-C-K-M-E so we can get a lot hype in here. Everybody intelligent so we can get it right here. Grip the mic up on them and tell them that this is my year. Yeah, I'm intelligent on them. I said I'm intelligent on him. Yeah, look, no need intelligent on him. I said I'm intelligent on him. Yeah.
Sadly, our time is up, but the whole entire ER staff would like to thank you for spending your time with us today. We are going to end the show off right with the Soapbox Derby winning speech from Lamonte Jones. I'm your host here on Early Reality. Till next time, peace. My name is Lamonte Jones, and I go to Cleveland Central Catholic. I grew up in the King Kennedy Projects, and it's not that pretty. If you ask me, we're put in the butt crack of the city. It gets grimy and gritty, and it fills me a pity. If I had to describe the conditions in one word, it has to be sh I lived in three different projects. KKO, West 7th. I even lived on East 30th, home of the heartless felons. We try to teach you a lesson with ruthless aggression. But you all don't understand the stories that we're telling. If public housing was invaluable, we'd just be a race. Because truth be told, we're a bunch of slaves displaced. With violence and more violence, our problems are faced. We live in waste. Picture how that tastes. If you really want to know, just ask the roaches. Who shows us how to respect when our only father figures are coaches? So the only options of death and prison approaches. But not for me because the struggle made me ferocious. See, the history of the projects just repeats itself. We like that stale box of cereal just on the shelf. You guys say if we, if we come together, then we can change it ourselves, but even with a plan, you still gonna need some help. See, we push to our limits, and it's not just a shove. Due to pimps, gangs, and drugs, kids don't get any love. Instead, they call on their blood or holla at their cuz. That's why the people that I grew up with only believe in the gov. And not the president, police, or social security. Because Donald the Duck and the scam artist Hillary have plans to use the world's largest artillery while we're plagued with insecurity, death, and impurity. Advertisements of Swisher Sweets, black and mild cigarettes is the beginning of a road to death and regret. The exposure to the substance is just the first threat. We go to school three miles away, we get home, then we forget. You may ask who this affects, and the answer is you. You don't understand all the good that you can do. We may fight over a block, the color red, the color blue, but if we really want change, then it starts with us too. See, I'ma start with our problems, you know what I'm talking about. Like claiming I'm from this hood instead of trying to get out. Honestly, there's a drought and people taking the right route because without the right resources, how are we supposed to sprout? See, the problem is, nah, that's too blunt. See, the problem is we face our problems with a blunt. See, you gon' ride for your boys, but I ain't even got a stunt. We wonder why we in the back, we never started in the front. See, I'm quick to claim the ghetto, but I never lived through the Holocaust. Most of us commit crimes, risk reward, but what's the cost? Without fathers and stable families, the children become lost. Some people can't afford toothpaste, but we still supposed to floss. And the promotion of safe sex leaves all the teens daring. And for the ones in the Jets, I can tell y'all not caring. One of the most important things is it starts with the parents. And if you ask them how we do that, man, I swear it's so apparent. See, I could have did research, but it's better hands on. More than five hours a day, I watch TV and listen to songs. We also got things like the radio. How can electronics lead you wrong? Only thing that I ask for you is just to pass the message on. Because we start with two strikes, and I'm not referencing a batter. Despair, defeat, and disadvantages are served on a platter. Honestly, we're taught manners, but it only makes us matter. Because besides our own people, no one tells us our lives matter. Was a 
up in these gangs, man, that stuff is just a weed. And I'ma tell you right now, street life it ain't the key. You should open up your eyes and dive into the sea. When you walk up out the house, it's gonna be your life. And I ain't saying nothing, cause you gon' pay the price. Why you rolling up your eyes? I just keep it real, a hundred in disguise. And if you did believe me, thanks to God that you're alive. Early reality, so you know we saving lives. I'm on my P's and Q's, rest in peace to all you guys. The one that think these lies, give up and never tries. ER help us survive, reality televised.